he could do is undermine the collective security clause of NATO. The Article 5, uh, an attack on one country is an attack on all. But, you know, we, we, we've we got to measure this very much more carefully than we have up to now. Uh, a lot of uh, American members of Congress were in London a couple of weeks ago, and they insisted to me uh, that actually, in reality, he is a strong supporter of NATO and of the NATO alliance, instead of America being in NATO. So I think this sounded to me a bit like the campaign trail. But, you know, it, it, it is worrying, and, and the signals will be picked up by the wrong people. OK, well, let's talk to Lord Robertson. George Robertson, former Secretary General of NATO and UK Defence Secretary. George, I, I know that, you know, Trump does a lot of things in order to just gain attention, but isn't it particularly worrying to hear a potential American president coming out with things like that? It would be deeply destabilizing if it was more than just bluster on a campaign trail. The fact is that uh, the Congress of the United States of America last year, by huge majorities, both houses, said that they were staying in NATO and that they supported NATO. So he can't, uh, in many ways, do what it is he's saying at the present moment. And anyway, his bark is usually much uh, more fierce than his bite. When he was last president, he put more money into NATO. He gave missiles to Poland and to Ukraine. Uh, and indeed, he built up the armed forces of the United States. So I think we've got to treat this a bit skeptically. Uh, although in the short term, it's going to be worrying because it's a signal that will be listened more carefully in the Kremlin than it actually will be uh, in the uh, United States. Yes, and you know, you would imagine that at this juncture in an incredibly unstable world with sort of new battle lines, new world order lines being created uh, right, left and centre, to be saying that Russia could do whatever the hell they want, um, is a pretty, yeah, I mean, you know, you could call it just sloganism or you could say that it's a, a genuine disregard from Donald Trump for NATO. I mean, could, he could pull out, couldn't he? No, he couldn't pull out. The decision <clears throat> that, the, that the United States is in NATO is one taken by the Congress, by the elected representatives there, and they've made their view absolutely clear in the last 12 months. So he can't do that. But what he could do is undermine the collective security clause of NATO, the Article 5, uh, an attack on one country is an attack on all. But, you know, we, we, we've got to measure this very much more carefully than we have up to now. Uh, a lot of uh, American members of Congress were in London a couple of weeks ago, and they insisted to me uh, that actually, in reality, he is a strong supporter of NATO and of the NATO alliance, instead of America being in NATO. So I think this sounded to me a bit like the campaign trail. But, you know, it, it, it is worrying, and, and the signals will be picked up by the wrong people. My 18-year-old son talked to me the other day about conscription. Quite shocked me that he was prepared to go and fight for his country, which was a thought that, he, you know, had never crossed my mind would happen in his lifetime. And yet, you know, those are the sort of warnings that we're getting from defence ministers and from all kinds of people involved in um, that arena. Um, what's your feeling about the instability of the times that we live in and, and whether a wider conflict globally is a, a potential possibility in the near future? Well, we've got a warning. And we should heed that warning, because Vladimir Putin is, is challenging us at the moment. And the only way we can deal with him is through deterrence. We've got to have the ability to strike back if he were to attack. I don't think he's going to do that. And he certainly wouldn't take on the might of NATO as, as a whole. But I think you know what happened in America yesterday, what, what Donald Trump is signaling is that the Europeans need to do much more in their own interests and in their own security interests. We've got to care as much for our children and their safety as the Americans do for us as well. Um, that's the reality of it. A lot of the European countries are simply not spending money on defence. They are not readying their troops. They are not robust enough to be the deterrent that would be required, you know, 
you know, if, if, if an adversary, whether it be Russia or China or North Korea or Iran, all of these are potential adversaries and we've got to be able to deter them. And if we continue, the Europeans continue to, uh, to go short on their obligations, then that deterrence is not going to be as strong as it needs to be. George, is that the lesson here then, that we've sort of sat on our laurels since the end of the Second World War and relied on America standing up for us and, and therefore perhaps not invested in the way we would have had to otherwise? And has that relationship changed? Can we no longer rely on America to fight our battles for us? Well, we shouldn't depend on America anyway. You know, America is part of an alliance, but the Europeans, the European countries, ourselves included, have got to be doing much more in our own interests. We've got to build our own defences because the dangers are there. They're manifest. They're visible. We're seeing them every day in what's happening in, the, in Ukraine and the attack on Ukraine today. So the dangers are not mythical. They're not academic. They're not theoretical. They are real. And if we're going to protect that generation you were talking about there with your son, and future generations, then we've got to have a robust defense that will deter any potential adversaries. And we've now got a very clear signal from the American campaign trail that Europe needs to do much more. Just finally, while I've got you, if you don't mind, um, Lord Cameron has been calling on Israel to rethink on its approach to Rafa and says Israel should stop and think seriously as there's nowhere for civilians to go. Other politicians are calling for an immediate or sustainable ceasefire, uh, including Anna Sawa. Your, um, I, and I just wondered what, what, what your thoughts are. This feels like, again, potentially a a triggering moment and also a, a genuine humanitarian disaster. I strongly support what uh, David Cameron is saying and what President Biden is saying at the present moment. The Israelis must be conscious uh, not only of the immediate problem that they face, but also of the longer term. There's got to be a sustainable future for the Palestinians. And we cannot have Prime Minister Netanyahu denying any possibility of that. That simply leads to more conflict. And I think what David Cameron and President Biden and uh, Mr. Blinken are all saying is right and proper. And I hope that the Israeli cabinet is listening to them.